and you wait a whole week to see that you took a picture of your thumb. <laughs> People take a picture of anything. I saw somebody taking a picture of a picture. Look at that nice picture. Let me get a picture <laughs> of that picture. <laughs> you can take as many as you want, right? Remember back in the day when cameras had film? You might not remember, but Google it. This thing called film made you highly selective with your picture taking. Right? Only memorable stuff. Because you knew you had 24 shots. The sky could be on fire. Like that's not memorable enough. I got one shot left. <laughs> you had to put in work, effort. You had to drop your pictures off and wait like a week. <laughs> you would dream about the pictures. Oh, I can't wait to see my pictures. <laughs> oh, they gonna be so nice. <laughs> you would call and check on them. Excuse me, my pictures ready? <laughs> Celebrate on Tuesday. It starts with my pictures at, man. <laughs> Need to see how I look. <laughs> and you wait a whole week to see that you took a picture of your thumb. <laughs> look. And they gave us the negatives, right? Did anybody ever use the negatives? <laughs> Negative. <laughs> The most you did with a negative was just hope to the sun, right? <laughs> That's my thumb, all right. <laughs> White people look at the negative, see what they look like if they was black. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Then they came out with one hour photo. Remember that one hour photo? He was like, I can get my pictures in an hour. That's just crazy talk. <laughs> can you imagine somebody taking a picture? Like, come back in an hour. Like, what kind of phone you got? <laughs> you got a 1G phone? <laughs> ain't no iPhone, that's an H phone. I love it, man. Just think how far that invention has come where you could fit in your pocket, right? Remember your grandparents' camera? It was huge. It like an accordion. <laughs> that camera was so dangerous, it had a cape on it. <laughs> Cameras used to have a cape. <laughs> they were like, you stand over there. Let me take shelter. <laughs> It was someone's job to be the Flash, right? He just stood over here. <laughs> he put his life on the line for that picture, right? He was holding a stick of dynamite. <laughs> what happened to the last guy in this position? <laughs> the big old mushroom cloud, boom! <laughs> they got their pictures like three years later. <laughs> like, who is this? Is that a thumb in that picture? Now they got these buttholes out there with the selfie stick. You ever say, let me get a picture of myself. Cause I ain't got no friends. Cause I'm always taking pictures of myself. What the back of my hair look like? Hey. Your grandparents never knew what the back of their hair looked like. Don't get me wrong, I, I like pictures. You know, like, though, I like candid shots. Because at least they have artistic value, right? But they are dangerous to take, too. Especially you take a candid shot of a woman. As soon as you hit a little click, click, let me see that picture, let me see that picture. Oh, no! You gotta delete that picture. 
I got a double chin in that picture. <laughs> well, you got a double chin in real life. <laughs> you don't need another picture. You need surgery. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you got to start doing some of these. <laughs> I don't even know if this worked. This work? <laughs> That's a waste of time, right? Anyone have any work done? <laughs> you got real quiet in here, huh? You guys want to change the subject, huh? <laughs> no one wants to admit it like we don't know. You can't walk in a room with a brand new pair of lips like... I've always had these. I'm like, you lying. <laughs> you like you got stung in the face. <laughs> nah, man, I'm not a fan of work. I think aging gracefully, that's sexy to me, right? Yeah. It's age gracefully. Because I don't think you should be 65. Uh, with a brand new forehead. <laughs> you 65, you ain't got no lines in your forehead. You never thought about anything. You never pondered nothing. <laughs> like, I don't trust you. <laughs> you never made a real decision in your life. <laughs> Just gotta eat right and work out. That's all you can do, right? Eat right and work out. That's it, man. Anybody work out? <laughs> all right, eight people in the front row. Man. <laughs> I gotta work out, man. I gotta work out because my career ain't take off as fast as I hope. <laughs> and I wanna be there when it does. <laughs> and I don't wanna be all dead and successful. <laughs> Not how I mapped it out. I don't like it. You know what I do? I trick myself into going to the gym. You know what I do, right? I go to the gym. I find a voluptuous woman on the treadmill. I get on the treadmill behind her and pretend like I'm chasing her. <laughs> she speed up, I speed up. Keeps me healthy and brings out my inner creepiness. Now you gotta get rid of that creepiness, right? <laughs> it was working great till I find out somebody's on the treadmill behind me. <laughs> and he was like, hey! Slow down! I'm like, nah! Look, now my treadmill's against the wall. <laughs> it's gotta stay healthy, right? That's it. Gotta travel, right? That's it. That's healthy, right? Traveling. I've been traveling a lot. Started doing cruises. Because that's where my career is headed. <laughs> I like it, though, man. I like it. Get me out of those cold New Jersey winters. That's important, right? I like it. They always send me down to uh, Florida Plantation, Florida. Anybody ever heard of Plantation, Florida? Yeah? I hadn't. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I was nervous. <laughs> the whole time I was in Plantation, Florida. I was like, y'all are gonna let me leave here. Like, I, don't, I don't want no problems with my departure. <laughs> it felt weird getting a cab talking about, take me to plantation. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I went from plantation to the boat. <laughs> Talk about how things have changed. <laughs> what Obama was talking about. <laughs> Oh, man, I was traveling a lot, man. I was actually in Honduras on election day. Yeah, man, I'm gonna tell you, I was upset. I was like, you know what? I ain't going back. <laughs> and I realized I was in Honduras. <laughs> and I was like, I ain't staying here. <laughs> Things can't never get this bad. <laughs> I'll swim back to America if I have to. <laughs> So you got a problem with America, just leave for a couple days. You'll be back. <laughs> with a whole new attitude. <laughs> I don't care who in the White House, we got hot water. <laughs> it was funny, man. Two days later, I was in Casamel, Mexico, right? Yeah. And the Wi-Fi was out on the entire island. And the Mexicans was like, Trump ain't playing around. <laughs> when he said a wall, he meant a firewall. <laughs> Some got lost in the translation. <laughs> I just feel like we got a love-hate relationship with the presidency, right? That's it. Doesn't matter who in the office, right? Remember we had, we had Bush, then we had Obama, then we got Trump, and when that pendulum swings back and Flavor Flav takes office. <laughs> he like, yeah, boy! <laughs> oh, I love it though, man. You guys are great, man. As I mentioned, uh, a couple of times, I'm from Jersey. <laughs> no surprise there. Um... <laughs> Please ask me if I'm really from Jersey, like I would make that up. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Jersey sometimes, right? A lot of people don't know this about New Jersey, right? But New Jersey is like the last Northern state to abolish slavery. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let's get rid of this. Jersey was like, hold on. <laughs> Let's not rush into anything. <laughs> they say it's three parts of Jersey, right? The northern part is basically a suburb of New York. And the southern part is basically a suburb of Philadelphia. And the central part is basically a suburb of Mississippi. <laughs> No offense to Mississippi. <laughs> nah, you know what's the most annoying thing about being from Jersey sometimes? It's like everywhere you go, you gotta pay a toll, man, right? Yeah. <sighs> I hate that. Sometimes I put in my GPS, no tolls. <laughs> my GPS is like, <sighs> you gonna have to walk. GPS gave me directions to the bus station. That's the only way to get around them toes, man. They keep going up. It's $15 to the George Washington Bridge. $15 to take the Lincoln Tunnel. Washington and Lincoln got me looking for an underground railroad. <laughs> the new Harriet Tubman right here. Come on. Come on, follow me to Easy Passage. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the North Star. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's just certain things, right? Certain things about Jersey. Man, I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. You ever heard of that, Patterson? Two people. <laughs> small, thugged-out city. It's so small, right? We used to get robbed 
by people we knew. <laughs> people jump out, stick them up. I'm like, Andre? <laughs> Yo, I'ma tell your mother, man. <laughs> By the way, how is Aunt Carol? How's she doing? <laughs> you know how hard to have a meal with somebody who just robbed you? <laughs> Could you pass the bread? Could you pass my wallet back? <laughs> I tell people all the time, right? The city has been violent a long time. It's nothing new. Like the founding father of Patterson was Alexander Hamilton, right? And what happened to him? <laughs> he got shot, that's what happened to him. <laughs> Doesn't bode well for a city when the founding father gets shot, right? All these cities have been violent. Anyone know who he got shot by? Aaron Burr, Aaron Burr who was from Newark. <laughs> <laughs> in the famous duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr, like how gangster is that when you get shot in a duel? When you make an appointment to shoot somebody? <laughs> That's gangster, right? Like, I'm gonna shoot you in your face. What you doing next Tuesday around 10, 15? Is, is that a good day to get shot in the face? Cause I got Thursday open, I can shoot you in the face on Thursday. Or Saturday after brunch. Think about that, they will line up back to back, take 10 paces, turn and blast. Like how nerve wracking is this? Cause you have to trust the person that's there to kill you. You gotta trust that they're gonna take those 10 steps, right? If you've never cheated, this will be the time to do it. Like, we going on 10, right? <laughs> I'm going on five. <laughs> Matter of fact, pow! <laughs> yeah, Patterson, New Jersey, man. Went to public school there and everything. Anybody else go to public school? In Patterson? They're like, oh no, no. Things were never that bad. <laughs> See, y'all budget was a little different than ours, right? Y'all budget was like eight, nine grand a student. Our budget was like 85 cents a student. <laughs> That's like two quarters and a dime. <laughs> you guys really did go to public school, didn't you? <laughs> Look, this is how bad the budget was. Remember you would get your books? And you could tell me had the book before you, behind me names are in the book. I'm looking at my math book going, Booker T. Washington. <laughs> Frederick Douglass. <laughs> How old is this math book? <laughs> Public school made you tough though, right? I don't know if these kids would last when we went to school, right? Getting bullied in cyberspace. <laughs> I don't even know how that works. <laughs> You gotta have computers that I know how that work. <laughs> Text bullying, I still don't understand it. How does that work? It's like, bzzz. Oh no! <laughs> He's gonna get me! <laughs> At some point in the future. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> Delete it. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Can you see the bully walking on the kid? Hey, yo, you get my text. <laughs> nah, I sent it this morning. You still got the same number? Well, let me get your new number. We're gonna do this again tomorrow. <laughs> we had real bullies, right? They was in your face. Cause there was a policy in effect when I went to school called leave every kid behind. <laughs> I had a 30 year old in my fourth grade class. <laughs> he was getting everybody at the school. I'm gonna get you at the school. 
I'ma get you at the school. He told the principal, I'ma get you at the school. As soon as I pick up my kids, I'ma get you. And I went to public school 28, which is right next to public school four. I think the dude who numbered the schools went to public school too. <laughs> but school four was like for the project kids and school 28 was for the kids that had a chance. <laughs> one day I was in the hallway when one of the kids from school four escaped. <laughs> and he was like, come in the bathroom. And I was like, no. Because <laughs> that did not sound like a good idea to me, right? No great story ever starts off with, well, I was invited into the bathroom. <laughs> there was pizza and fireworks. <laughs> Clearly the best decision ever made in my life not to go in that bathroom. I think another great decision I think I made was to go into the military after I graduated, right? Uh, please, please, don't clap, don't clap. It's my only option out the hood. <laughs> Would you give it to these guys? Any vets in here, any vets in here? Raise your hand if you're a vet, vet. Give it up for those guys, give it up for those guys. I went to the Air Force. Yeah. You talk about culture shock. I went from Patterson to the Lily White Air Force. <laughs> like I was the only black guy in my entire flight. So this is nothing new to me. <laughs> I feel right at home here, actually. I, uh... <laughs> Well, there were white dudes from like Montana and Wyoming who had never physically saw a black dude, right? <laughs> they would just stare at me like. <laughs> My first time seeing a white dude who never saw a black dude, I just stared back. <laughs> <laughs> we was in awe of each other. <laughs> so it's my time to represent, right? I made sure I didn't want to sustain any of the stereotypes. I made sure I ain't eat any fried chicken. I didn't drink Kool-Aid. I had a job, so that was covered. But then we all had to shower together. So three out of four, not bad. Look, I did what I could do for my people. Hey, yo, you guys have been amazing. Everybody, ladies.